students today i'll be discussing a very important chapter according to the neat examination that is the first chapter of 11th standard that is the living world now the living world chapter it has got four topics that is the features of the living organisms taxonomy and systematics taxonomic hierarchy and taxonomical aids in this lecture i'll be dealing with the first topic that is the features of living organisms now if you talk about the features we have growth reproduction consciousness or consciousness is also called irritability or sensitivity or awareness then we have metabolism and then we have cellular structure now one by one we are going to deal with these features and we will also come to a conclusion that whether they are the defining features of living organisms or not now what do you understand by defining feature a defining feature it should have two criteria yes it should fulfill two criteria first that it should be unexceptionally shown by all living organisms and the second one that particular feature should be absent in non living the first one is growth now we know that non living organisms like sand mounds mountains and boulders boulders are the rocks they also show growth but the type of growth they show is extrinsic growth and the living organisms like us we show intrinsic growth that is internal growth so whether growth it is a defining feature no no students it is not a defining feature but if you are asked a question intrinsic growth yes intrinsic growth is a defining feature the next one is reproduction now is reproduction a defining feature no reproduction is not an all inclusive defining feature of living organisms that means now the ncrd states this line and that means that reproduction is not shown universally by all the living organisms as there are certain exceptions like mules hybrid between the male donkey and female horse hyena sterile worker bees and infertile human couples these are the exceptions which do not reproduce that means reproduction is also not a defining feature but if you are asked a question that is reproduction a defining feature in majority of the living organisms then your answer would be yes you're right the answer is yes next one is irritability that is consciousness what is consciousness ability of the living organism to respond to the external stimulus and to sense the external stimulus and respond to it accordingly we have the sense organs that means the level of consciousness in us is more as compared to the plants but that does not mean that the plants are not conscious plants are also conscious that means if you talk about consciousness or irritability is also a defining feature now human beings they have an additional property of self consciousness that means human beings we are aware of ourselves yes we are aware of ourselves that means we are self conscious besides being conscious that means self consciousness is not a defining feature but consciousness is a defining feature now a question was asked in neat examination that what is the most obvious and technically complicated feature of living organisms yes you are right it is consciousness now if you ask to explain that why is that so suppose we touch a hot rod or a hot cooker so when we touch a hot rod we are touching with our organ system our muscular system is involved our nervous system is involved which immediately stimulates us to withdraw our hand and sometimes our emotions are also involved we start crying so there is involvement of so many organ systems which is making it a complicated feature what about a person lying in coma a person lying in coma is brain dead he is neither living nor non living he is not having any self consciousness what about consciousness is it present in a person who is going through coma yes some amount of consciousness is present 
not the full degree of consciousness is there because at least his body is responding to the artificial support systems. What about metabolism? Now, the sum total of all the chemical reactions in our body is metabolism. So is metabolism a defining feature? Yes. But what about the metabolic reactions? See here students, metabolic reactions can occur in vivo as well as in vitro. Now what is in vivo? In vivo means inside the cell or inside the body of the organism. What about in vitro? In vitro means outside the cell or outside the body of organism. That means the reactions which are occurring in a test tube. So what about the metabolic reactions which are occurring in vitro? Are they a defining feature? No. These reactions are neither living nor non-living. They are surely living reactions but not the living things. So hence we come to a conclusion that metabolism is a defining feature but the isolated metabolic reactions are not a defining feature. Lastly, cellular structure. As we all know, that cell is the building block of life and cell is the functional unit of life. Starting from prokaryotes to eukaryotes, from unicellular to multicellular organisms, all the bodies are made up of cells. That means even cellular structure is a defining feature. Hence to sum up, growth it's a non-defining feature but intrinsic growth is a defining feature. Reproduction is a non-defining feature. Irritability, that is consciousness, is a defining feature, but self-consciousness is not a defining feature. Metabolism, it's a defining feature, but isolated metabolic reactions are not a defining feature. Cellular structure, yes, cellular organization is a defining feature. Thank you so much.